Hi all, in this video we are going to discuss an efficient fine tuning technique for large language models. Whenever we talk of large language models and fine tuning, one of the key terms that comes across is catastrophic forgetting. If you haven't come across this term yet, don't worry. Let me explain you very simply. Whenever we want to fine tune a large language model with newer data, with task specific data, we run the risk of losing some of the existing knowledge of the large language model. There is some loss of information. This is known as catastrophic forgetting. In, simp in further simpler terms, by this analogy, understand that there is a large cargo ship filled with containers. Now, in order to put in more containers or in order to bring in additional containers, you might have to empty some of the existing containers or replace them. This is what catastrophic forgetting is about. Parameter efficient fine tuning is a class of techniques in order to minimize catastrophic forgetting while fine tuning large language models. The very reason you should focus on this particular video is because whenever when, when we shall go for fine tuning large language models from the implementation perspective, when we'll talk about LoRa, QLoRa, Understanding how these works will help you in choosing the right technique and applying them effectively. So make sure to watch it till the end. Now let us understand what PEFT is and how, what is the underlying objective or how PEFT works. PEFT or parameter efficient fine tuning basically freezes some of the layers of the large language model therefore preserving the core knowledge of the large language model and training additional data on some of the other layers. This is the underlying principle of PEFT. Now PEFT has some of the advantages which include reduced memory usage, reduced storage, lower la inference latency and as at the same time one of the key advantages is you can use the same pre-trained architecture or you can use the same pre-trained model for multiple tasks. Right? It, it, it just shares the underlying pre-trained weights or underlying pre-trained model and trains the only the top layers or only some of the few layers which can be varied based on the task. This is the advantages of PEFT. However, there are some key disadvantages as well which include that because we are constricting or making our model more constrained, it involves higher training time. There is additional overhead time for during training of the model. At the same time, the performance of a model trained using PEFT is sensitive to hyperparameter choices. So what choice of hyperparameter you made during training of the model is going to affect the performance of the overall or the fine-tuned model as well. Okay. Hope you understand the basic objective or basic underlying principle behind PEFT. Now we are going to see two primary techniques or two primary types of PEFT based techniques for fine tuning large language models. These include LoRa and QLoRa. Okay. Let us see them one by one. If you haven't heard about these, don't worry. We'll understand them very simply. And when we go for the actual implementation or fine tuning of any large language model using these techniques, you would really appreciate the knowledge that you gain from this video. Okay. So there are multiple types of PEFT, which include TFU, LoRa, QLoRa. In this video, we are going to talk about LoRa and QLoRa because these are the two most primarily used across the industry and they are the most efficient ones. Okay. So what does LoRa basically mean? LoRa is low rank approximation. Okay. What it does is it introduces low rank matrices into each layer of the transformer architecture. You would recall from the transformer architecture. If not, I'll attach the diagram here. Check the transformer architecture and let me know if you want me to make a separate video on the transformer architecture. We can very well do so. Okay. So it introduces low rank matrices into the transformer architecture, thereby aiming to reduce the number of trainable parameters and computational burden that you would incur in fine tuning these models. Remember, these large language models have billions of parameters, right? So it's not feasible both in terms of computational cost as well as in terms of resources in order to effectively train them each time, right? So fine tuning comes as a rescue in order to save some of these time on top of the base model that you have. And using these techniques such as LoRa and QLoRa further saves your computational cost by reducing the number of trainable parameters. 
Now, some of the advantages that come with LoRa include using low rank matrices instead of fine tuning all parameters. LoRa significantly reduces the number of trainable parameters as we already saw. Now, task switching becomes very efficient here. Now, like one of the key advantages of PEFT was that it allows multiple tasks to share the same pre-trained model, right? So, LoRa works on top of that and therefore allows pre-trained model to be shared across multiple tasks. During implementation, we shall see how this works, okay? Inference latency is very low. LoRa's linear design ensures no additional latency compared to fully tuned models. Now we shall come to QLoRa. QLoRa is quantized low rank approximation. So when we talk of quantization, this basically means reducing a, say a 32 bit weight to 16 bit weight or 8 bit weight, right? It is basically like when you store a double number, right? A, a double precision number, double precision number occupies nearly 32 bytes, uh, 32 bits or four bytes in memory, right? Now, if you reduce it to a float type, it will occupy 16 bits or two bytes. But at the same time, you need to ensure that the effi efficiency or the performance of the model is not deteriorated. You are not going to compromise on the performance of the model, but at the same time, compress the model or quantize the model to make it more efficient in terms of storage, in terms of the memory consumption. So LoRa is QLoRa is basically an extension of LoRa that further introduces quantization. And there are two quantization techniques that are introduced here. One is the four bit normal float quantization. Other is the double quantization. To talk about it, four bit normal float quantization, it basically converts a double precision number to a floating point number. And double quantization further reduces it to a eight bit or or we can say a container or a memory location that can store 0 to 255, right? An integer precision. This, this is the underlying principle of QLoRa. Now, some of the advantages that come with QLoRa is further memory reduction. It reduces the memory consumption due to quantization. The performance is preserved, right? While you are quantizing your model, while you are reducing the memory consumption, while you are reducing the storage, you are not compromising on the performance of the model. This is one of the key principles using QLoRa. If the performance is deteriorated, then there definitely you would not be, it, it would not be very beneficial to utilize these models. So there is a balance between how much memory you want to save at the same time, how much performance you want to preserve. And additionally, this QLoRa technique can be applied to multiple LLMs, right? It's not restricted to a class of LLMs such as T5. No, you can apply it across multiple such as T5, BERT, LAMA. So all these models can use quantization. You can apply QLoRa in order to fine tune these LLMs. Okay. Hope you learned something new. If you find this content useful, make sure to give a thumbs up. See you in the next lecture. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.